Hi, my name is Jacob Taylor, and today I'm going to teach you how to multiply without a calculator. So, when you multiply two numbers together, uh, we normally multiply them, let's take 12 times 3 for example, by stacking them one on top of the other. So you do 12 on the top, and you do 3 on the bottom, and this is your multiplication technique. You do 3 times 2, which is 6, and you do 3 times 1, which is 3, and you get 36. And uh, this is a really nice, easy way to multiply numbers. And I want to show you a slightly different way that you can multiply a problem like this without using the traditional stack and multiply method. So let's take the exact same problem, 12 times 3, but I want to set it up in a little bit different way. And I want to set it up using something that we in mathematics call the distributive property. So the distributive property is something that you probably learned whenever you took Algebra 1, maybe a little earlier than Algebra 1. And when you learn the distributive property, it looks a little something like this. And I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, variables in here because when you learn it in Algebra, it probably looks a little something like this. And the way that you would read this problem is 3 multiplied by the quantity x plus 2. What that means is this 3 outside of the parentheses needs to get multiplied by both of the terms that are inside the parentheses. So we need to multiply the 3 by the x and also multiply the 3 by the 2. So 3 times x is 3x and 3 times 2 is 6, and we bring the plus sign down, our answer would be 3x plus 6. So the distributive property is used quite a bit in algebra. You may have even gotten really advanced with it and done something like this. And this is also the distributive property. This x has to get multiplied by both of these terms, and this 2 has to get multiplied by both of these terms. So your math teacher may have referred to this as the FOIL method. I do not like the term FOIL, but that may be a topic for a different video. You don't need to know how to multiply all these x's and things like this. We're not going to be doing any algebra with the distributive property. Instead, what we're going to be doing is just standard multiplication using this method. So let's go back to 12 plus 3, or I'm sorry, 12 times 3. Now, in order to set this up, you want to take your uh, bigger number, which in this case is 12, and I want to split the 12 into two different numbers. Not just any two numbers, I want to split the 12 into two numbers that are very easy. Easy meaning multiples of 10. Multiplying by 10 is so simple, I want to multiply by 10 as much as I possibly can. Multiplying by 10 is really easy because if I did like 10 times 4, it's such an easy problem because you just do 4 times 1 and then add the 0 onto the end. So I want to multiply by 10. So what I want to do is I want to take this number 12 and I want to rewrite it as two numbers and I want those two numbers to be multiples of 10. For example, 12 is the same thing as 10 plus 2. Okay, I now have a multiple of 10 in this problem, the number 10, and I haven't changed the number because 10 plus 2 is equal to 12. So if you set this problem up as 3 times 12, let's set it up like this. Three times 12. If you remember from your middle school mathematics, parentheses mean the same thing as the multiplication sign. So this is 3 times 12, but what we just showed is that 12 is also equivalent to 10 plus 2. So I'm now going to rewrite this problem as 3 times 10 plus 2. I haven't changed the problem. The amount that's in the parentheses is still 12. I have not changed that number, that's important. It's still 12, it's just been split into two different pieces, a 10 and a two. And now you can see that this problem right here looks a lot like our distributive property problem up here at the top where I had a number outside parentheses and I had two numbers inside the parentheses so the number outside gets multiplied by both of the numbers inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply like this. Three times 10 is 30. And then I want to do the 3 multiplied by the 2, which is 6, and 30 plus 6 is 36. Now the reason I say this is an interesting method for multiplying, multiplying smaller numbers, is that you can do 3 times 10 and 3 times 2 in your head, I hope. If you have the ability to multiply single digit numbers, you can do 3 times 10 and 3 times 2 without using a calculator, and if you have a relatively good memory, you can do it without even writing anything down. If you can separate that 12 into the two different pieces uh, in your head, you can multiply this without writing it down. So let's try another one. Let's try a little bit tougher numbers. Let's try something like uh, 47 multiplied by 8. 
Okay, so the bigger number in this problem is the 47, and so that is the number that I want to separate into two different pieces. If I wrote this down with the small number outside the parentheses and the big number inside the parentheses, that's what it would look like, 8 multiplied by 47. And I want to pull the 47 apart into two different terms, one of which is a multiple of 10. It's really easy at least in English mathematics, because the two numbers you should divide it into are right there in the name of the number. If we say 47, those are the two numbers you should divide it into, 40 and 7, 40 being a multiple of 10. So I know that 47 is equal to 40 plus 7. Notice my first number is that multiple of 10 that I'm looking for. So if I rewrite this problem and I replace the 47 with a 40 plus 7, I can now use the distributive property to multiply these two together. And look how simple it is. 8 times 40 is very easy since 40 is a multiple of 10. I do 8 times 4, which is 32, and then I add the 0. Bring down the plus sign, and then 8 times 7 is 56. And then you can add these two numbers together. 320 plus 56 is equal to 376. And so I'm able to multiply fairly large numbers using the distributor property. You could stack them and multiply, but if you stack them and multiply using the old method, it's very slightly longer. I would do 8 times 7, which is 56. Carry that 5 over there. 8 times 4 is 32. 32 plus 5 is 37. And there's the 376. Uh, so you can multiply this way with a sheet of paper. It's probably 6 of one, half dozen of the other. But to multiply it in your head, or without a calculator, using the distributive property is a pretty quick and I think pretty interesting way to do it. I want you to notice whenever I multiplied these out, uh, what numbers I said. I said first I do 8 times 7, which is 56, carry the 5, and then I do 8 times 4, which is 32, and you notice some similarities between these two numbers and those two numbers. 8 times 4 was actually 8 times 40, because 40 was in the tens column, so really that wasn't a 32, it was a 320, and I've got 320 and 56, which are those two numbers right there. So the distributive property is really cool for doing something like that, especially if you can keep um, two different numbers in your head and you're pretty good at multiplying single digits. This method also works if you have two two-digit numbers. So let's say I've got 35, and I want to multiply by 64. Okay, so if I write this again using my parentheses, I would have 35 multiplied by 64. Now 64 being the bigger number is the one that I want to split into two numbers, and the two numbers are right there in the name. 64 I divided into a 60 and a 4 because 64 is equal to 60 plus 4. So I would end up with 35 on the outside and on the inside 60 plus 4. The problem with multiplying it right now, and I, I can use the distributive property, but it's not nearly as easy. I would have to do 35 times 60, and that is a problem that is certainly not as easy to do in your head, because previous problems that we did, this was a single digit number, and now it is a two digit number. 35 is now a two digit number, which means doing 35 times 60 in your head is really challenging. However, what I notice is that 35, like 64, can be split into two numbers. 35 is equivalent to 30 plus 5. So let's try that as well. Let's take the 35 and let's split it into 30 plus 5. And I'm going to put that in parentheses to show that those two numbers go together. I need to put the 30 and the 5 together. And now I've got a problem that looks like this. I now have two sets of parentheses. It certainly looks more challenging than the last problem that we did, but it's still the distributive property. This 30 now has to get multiplied by both of these numbers, and the 5 also has to get multiplied by both of these numbers. So let's try that. 30 times 60. It may seem as though those are two very large numbers that you can't add in your or can't multiply in your head. But since they're multiples of 10, it's really not that bad. You multiply the numbers, 3 times 6, which is 18, and then you just tack the zeros onto the end. This number had a zero, and this number had a zero, so there's our two zeros. 30 times 60, 1800. So I multiplied the 30 by the first number, now let's multiply the 30 by the second number. 30 times 4. So 3 times 4 is 12, and then I add the zero on there. There was a plus sign here, so I'm going to bring the plus sign down in between the two. So the 30 has been multiplied by both of these numbers, 
Let's do the same thing with the 5. 5 times 60. Again, I'm multiplying by factors of 10. Very simple. 5 times 6 is 30. And then I tack the 0 on at the end. This was a plus, so there we go, plus 300. And then finally, the last one, 5 times 4. No multiples of 10 here, but 5 times 4. I hope it's very easy for you, and that's just 20. So now I end up with these four different numbers that I need to add up. 1,800 plus 120 plus 300 plus 20. And of course, there are a variety of ways you could add this up. Probably the one you're most familiar with is to just stack them and add the place values. So I got all zeros here. This is a four. This is eight plus one is nine. Nine plus three is 12. So put down the two and carry the one and one and one is two. And my answer is 2,240. So you could solve this problem by stacking and multiplying, but you may be able to see right away um, how involved that would be. 64 times 35. I would do five times four, which is 20. Oh, look, there's the 20 right there. Carry the two. Uh, five times six is 30. The six is actually in the tens column though, so in your head you should be thinking five times 60, that's 300. But using this old method, five times six is 30, 30 plus two is 32. And then uh, depending on how you learn multiplication, you may have learned to leave this column blank or the way I learned it was to put a zero placeholder right there. And then you multiply here. Three times four is 12. Oh, but this is actually a 30. 30 times four is 120 there. So that's a 12, put down the 2 and carry the 1. And then 3 times 6 is 18, but really this is 30 times 60 because they're in the tens column. 30 times 60 is 1800. But 3 times 6 is 18, 18 plus 1 is 19. And then just like we did over here, you add them up. And we, of course, get the same answer. So this is just an interesting way to multiply. In some cases, it's a faster way to multiply than to stack. Um, it's especially quick if you're doing a two-digit number multiplied by a one-digit number, especially since the two numbers you should divide your big number into are usually said right in the name of the number. So for example, uh, 7 times uh, 29, I would do 7 times 20, that's 140, and seven times nine, which is 63. So my answer is 203. So it's very quick if you have a single digit number multiplied by a two digit number. And if you really want a challenge, you could try something like seven times 294, a single digit number times a three digit number. You would do seven times 200, that's 1400, plus seven times nine, that's 63, plus seven times four, which is 28 and then you would add these three numbers up using uh, whichever addition technique you think is best. You can see it gets a little harder to do in your head whenever you start doing three digit numbers. There's quite a lot to keep track of, uh, but there's the answer as well. So I think you should practice this, uh, at least single digit numbers multiplied by two digit numbers so that you can do these quickly in your head. It's a fast way to multiply if you don't have a calculator available and it's also a fantastic way to impress people at your next math party. And it's just kind of interesting to see how numbers play together and how you can take something like multiplication and see that it can be done in many different ways. So I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you practice multiplication, and we'll see you next time.